Good morning. Welcome to Grace and Truth for today. This is Pastor Pete from the Cleveland Baptist Church. Hope you and your family are doing well. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes of your time and and joining us here in this study uh, from the Word of God. We're in Genesis chapter number 40 still and continuing our journey through the life of Joseph. The Bible says in Genesis 40 and verse number 14, But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. We discover here a conversation that Joseph has with Pharaoh's chief butler. Of course, this man had had a dream, and Joseph was used of the Lord to interpret this dream. And the interpretation was that within three days, the butler was going to be removed from prison. He was going to once again be restored to his position. And Joseph's making a simple request of him. And the request is simply, think about me. Don't forget about me. And mention me to Pharaoh. He says, uh, I, here's my case. I, I, was, I was stolen out of my land. I was, I was sold by my brothers into slavery. And, and I've done nothing for which to be in this, in this prison, in this dungeon. And so that was the request that Joseph had made. Well, the Bible tells us that three days did come. And three days went. And the butler was restored to his position but listen to what the Bible says at the end of the very chapter, verse number 23. It says this, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Now, the title of our devotion today is Forgotten. Forgotten. You know, Joseph knew that Pharaoh's butler was to be released within these days, and he asked the butler to plead his cause with Pharaoh, again, based on the fact that he was unjustly in this prison. I, I would tell you that it is unlikely, highly unlikely, that the Pharaoh would have honored this request anyways. I had a family member that worked in, in prison for many years. Uh, he was a, a prison employee, he was not a, an inmate there, and, and yet he rubbed shoulders quite a bit with the prisoners. And, and his famous line was this, every prisoner I've ever met is innocent. <laughs> and, we, and we understand that. We understand that there certainly are always two sides to every story. Uh, but, but it's unlikely that the Pharaoh would have released Joseph Uh, simply based upon an interaction that his butler had had with Joseph in prison. Uh, But nevertheless, Joseph had hung his hopes and his dreams of this this interaction with this butler being his ticket to freedom. Uh, The final verse, of course, in this chapter is a depressing one, as the butler emerges from prison and completely forgets Joseph and forgets all about his request as he busily returns to his life. Uh, His life in prison, his time there is, is swiftly forgotten, including uh, the uh, forgetting of, of Joseph as well. And I think that Joseph's story of being forgotten, it reminds us of some general life truths or lessons that I think uh, I've learned specifically, but I suppose all of us have, have interacted with a time or two. And I want to share them with you. There are three of them that I want to uh, help you with this morning. I want to say this, number one, that God's plan for our lives rarely mirrors or matches our plan for our lives. You know, here's Joseph in prison, and he could see it. It was right in front of him. He could taste it. This this was his path to freedom, no doubt about it. And unless the butler make mention of Joseph in this prison, I mean, Joseph's certain that he is going to spend the rest of his life in this place. Joseph cannot envision, he simply cannot imagine another way out of here. And so in his mind, he thinks this must be what God's plan is too. It it, it has to be the same thing. And I'm just here to remind you that that Scripture teaches that God's ways are so often not our ways. I would encourage you to read Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9 that so clearly express that. Uh, I'm thinking to myself of some of the incredible stories in in the Bible and how so very rarely do they do they match what we would think. I'm thinking of, of Goliath, and who would have ever thought that a, just a young man would be the, uh, the person, not even a soldier enlisted in the army, but just some young shepherd boy would be the one to stand up and to face Goliath, much less, much less kill Goliath. I, I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking of Jesus as he's ministering to 5,000 men, not counting women and children, and, and, and the disciples you know, are, are tasked with finding food, and I'm uh, I'm, I'm just fairly certain they never dreamed that five loaves of bread and, and a few fish would be the means, the avenue through which God was going to feed these people. And yet, and yet that's exactly what he did. 
uh, I, I, I can't even imagine, you know, here's Jesus, the, the week of his crucifixion, he's talking about giving his life, and, and I have to think that his disciples are thinking, there is no way that this is the end game. There's no way that this is the plan uh, for this person that we assume to be the Messiah. And so I'm just here to tell you that God's plans uh, and his ways very rarely match up with ours, and we just have to be prepared for that. And here's Joseph, and I'm, I'm assuming that he is just believing with all of his heart that this must be God's plan. I just, God, you've, you, there's just no way that you could not be connecting the dots through all of this. And yet, and yet God's plan was different at this point in time. Now, there's a second truth that I want to share with you as it pertains to Joseph's story, and, and that is this, don't put too much confidence in your own plans. Uh, this sort of dovetails or falls in line with uh, with, with what we just said. But again, I can imagine Joseph being filled with such excitement and anticipation as the but butler is released from prison. And yet, days turn to weeks, weeks turn to months, and ultimately months turned into two years before Joseph was eventually remembered and, and released from prison. And can I tell you that this, this putting too much confidence in your plans is a great breeding ground for depression for bitterness, uh, the list could go on and on of things that could be, uh, could be born out of someone putting too much confidence in their own plans. And so again, be careful, be careful about putting too much confidence in what you have planned and how you think things are going to work out. And then that leads us into the final thought, and that is this: don't put too much confidence in others. Don't put too much confidence in others. You know, the butler was a great disappointment to Joseph, wasn't he? Ultimately, can I say that every man will fail you at some point or another? I love the psalmist who writes in Psalm 38, 15, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Psalm 42 and verse number 5, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Same chapter in verse number 11 repeats that phrase, Hope thou in God. Chapter 43 and verse number 5 repeats it as well, Hope in God. I want you to know that God's, God's people must, must have their hope in him as opposed to having their hope in a, in a man or in someone else. He, God, will never disappoint you. He will never let you down. I have to moment, imagine there were, so, there were some moments in that prison that Joseph probably developed some bitter thoughts towards this butler. He probably developed some bitter thoughts towards the Pharaoh. Maybe even he developed a bitter thought or two even towards God. And that's why I'm here to remind you that not to put our confidence in our own plans, not to put our confidence in others, because very rarely does God's plan match up with our plan for our lives. And may God help us to remember this simple truth. Father, I pray that you'd bless us today. Lead us, guide us. Lord, help us to keep our hope and our confidence and our trust in Thee. Lord, may we not put our confidence in ourselves, uh, Lord, in what we think, what we believe, or perhaps even in others, save that they be in Almighty God and, and in your Son, Jesus Christ, and in your Holy Spirit. Now lead us today, guide us, direct us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to Grace and Truth for today. Hope it's been a blessing to you. If it has been, let me encourage you to share this with someone else. And of course, if you're downloading this from a podcast source, let me encourage you to subscribe. And to leave us a rating and a review. That'll be a great help to us. God bless you. Hope you have a great day. We look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow.